Hey, what's up guys? So the idea of three point editing is that if we have any combination of in and out points between the source clip and the timeline, then the system is going to figure out where the fourth point is going to be and allow us to edit a specific range of the source clip into a specific range in the timeline. So now let's go ahead and have a look at what this looks like in DaVinci Resolve. Now, the most obvious way of setting in and outs is to use in and out points, which you can do by using the I and O key. And then you can hit option X to get out of the range. And this works exactly the same on the source clip as well. Now, in absence of in and out points in the timeline, the playhead can act as the in point. And when you have only an in point in the source clip, the last frame of the source clip will act as the out point. And if you only have an out point in the source clip, the first frame of the source clip can act as the in point. And we're going to look at some examples of these uh, later on. And if we only use in and out points, a great thing is that we can also preview where the fourth point is going to be. And we can do so by first of all coming to the view menu and then turn on show preview marks. And now here, if we uh, go ahead and let's say right now set up in and out points uh, in the source clip, and if we come to the timeline and we only set up an in point, we're gonna see right away that blue preview marker that shows us where the fourth point is going to be in the timeline. And the opposite also works as well. So if we set up in and out points in the timeline and then we come to the source clip and set up an in point, now we're gonna see that blue preview marker that shows us where the fourth point is going to be in the source clip. And lastly, with three-point editing, we can perform very common editing operations like insert, overwrite, and replace clips, with insert and overwrite being probably the most common. So with all that said, guys, let's go ahead and look at some examples. This will help us better understand how everything works. Okay, so in our first set of scenarios here, we have in and out points in the source clip, but only in point in the timeline. So now when we perform an operation like overwrite, you're gonna see that the in point of the source clip is going to land on the in point in the timeline, and the out point of the source clip is going to land on where the preview mark is. So when we go ahead and do like overwrite, you're gonna see that this is exactly what happened. And we can easily verify this by coming to the in point in the source clip uh, using keyboard shortcut shift I, and also coming to the first frame of this clip in the timeline uh, just to make sure that they match each other. Also, it's worth noting at this point that we can bring source clips to different tracks in the timeline, and we can easily do so by turning on destination control for different tracks. So for video tracks, we can do so by using command shift up and down key. This will switch destination control uh, for different tracks, and we're going to stick with the second track for now. And for audio tracks, we can use command option up and down key. This will switch destination control amongst audio tracks. And we're going to stay with the second track. So now if we go ahead and perform the same operation, you're gonna see that now this source clip is going to land on the second tracks instead of the first. All right, so continuing with our example here. So if we only have an out point instead, now what's gonna happen is that the out point of the source clip is going to align with the out point in the timeline and the in point of the source clip is going to land on where the preview mark is. So if we go ahead and uh, perform an operation like overwrite, you're gonna see that this is exactly what's going to happen. And uh, we can once again, uh, very easily verify this by coming to the out point in the source clip and uh, making sure that it's aligned with the last frame of this clip in the timeline. Lastly, when there are no in and out points in the timeline, the playhead itself is going to act as the in point. So what's gonna happen is that the in point of the source clip is going to land on where that playhead was. And we can verify this by making sure that the first frame of this clip in the timeline matches the frame at the in point of the source clip. Okay, so in our second set of scenarios here, we have in and out points in the timeline, but in the source clip, we only have an in point for now. So what's gonna happen is that the in point of the source clip is going to land on where the in point is in the timeline and where the preview mark is, is going to land on the out point in the timeline. So if we go ahead and perform an operation like insert, you're going to see that this is exactly what's going to happen. And we can verify this by making sure that the first frame of this clip in the timeline is going to match the frame at the in point of the source clip. 
Now, what if we only have an out point in the source clip? So what's going to happen is that the out point in the source clip is going to land on the out point in the timeline and where that preview mark is is going to land on the in point in the timeline. So if we do an insert, you're going to see exactly that and we can verify it by making sure that the last frame of this clip in the timeline matches the frame at the out point of the source clip. All right, guys, so in our last set of scenarios here, we only have in point in the timeline and also in point in the source clip. So what's going to happen is that the in points themselves will line up. But in the source clip, since we don't have out point, the last frame of the clip is going to act as the out point. And that is also going to be what the fourth point is going to look like in the timeline. So if we do an operation like overwrite, you're going to see that that's exactly what's going to happen. And once again, we can verify it by making sure that the last frame of this clip in the timeline is also going to be the last frame in the source clip. And with this scenario, if we don't set an explicit in point, the playhead itself is going to act as the in point. And if we perform the same operation, you're going to see the exact same thing happening also. Now, what if we only have an out point in the source clip? So then what's going to happen is that the first frame in the source clip is going to act as the in point and that in point is going to line up with where the playhead is in the timeline when we perform an operation like overwrite. And once again, we can verify this by coming to the first frame of this clip in the timeline and making sure that it matches the very first frame in the source clip. And if we only have, let's say, an out point in the timeline and only an in point in the source clip, so what's going to happen is that the last frame in the source clip is going to act as the out point and that point is going to line up with the out point at where the playhead is when we bring it into the timeline. So we can once again very easily verify this by making sure that the last frame of this clip in the timeline matches the last frame in the source clip. And last but not the least, if we only have an out point in the source clip, then what's going to happen is that the out points themselves will line up with each other and the first frame in the source clip is going to act as the in point. And that's also what the fourth point is going to look like when we bring the source clip in. And once again, let's easily check it by making sure that the first frame of this clip in the timeline matches the first frame in the source clip. Okay guys, so I hope this helps and uh, I will see you next time.